Hey guys, what's up? It's Chris here. I don't know if you've heard of Brian Vung from Let's Build That App, but he covers a lot of iOS programming in terms of intermediate level and senior level stuff, so definitely check him out if you haven't already. Well, recently he did a video covering his salary history and employment history, and I thought that would be very interesting for me to do here on this channel as well, but from a slightly different perspective because I live in Toronto, Canada, whereas he lives in the Silicon Valley. So when you hear the numbers that I'm about to share with you, uh, do keep in mind that I live in Canada, specifically Toronto. In the process of reaching a six-figure salary, I also left my job three times. So it's interesting how that happened, and let me tell you all about it. So let me set the stage. The year was 2007. I just graduated from university, um, fresh out of school. I got hired at a consulting company, and let's call it Company A, because I know there may be some people watching this video that I've worked with uh, or some previous employers that may not like me actually sharing these details. So I'm going to call it Company A. Uh, it was a consulting company, about 175 people. So it's a fair-sized company. And for those of you guys who don't know what a consulting company does, they basically write software for other people, for clients. And a lot of the clients you would recognize as airlines, they could be banks, they could be, in fact, this consulting company worked a lot with banks. So we built a lot of uh, banking software. So during this time, it was great because as part of consulting, you get to work on a lot of different projects for short amounts of time. So every three, four months, we'd finish a project with a client and we'd move on to another client. And with each client, you go through this process of gathering requirements, designing wireframes and you know all the way from prototyping, building the software, testing it and deploying it. And you get to do all of that in a span of you know four, six months, the different time ranges depending on how big the project is. Also, you get to travel a lot. So I got to travel to all around the States working with different companies. That was a lot of fun, especially for someone fresh out of school. Uh, I hadn't traveled a lot. And most of the time I would travel with one other person or a small team if it was a bigger project. And there was one time where I actually got to go to Las Vegas and that was by myself. So that was a very memorable experience uh, where I had to deploy a piece of software for a company that was going to demo something on stage. So it was kind of scary at the same time, but kind of exciting and it worked out well. I'll tell you guys about that another time. So the other thing with consulting is that I got to develop some um, soft skills, not just technical skills. Uh, being at the keyboard, typing and, and coding, I got to work on skills where I would have to speak with clients, uh, manage expectations. And a lot of the times you're thrown into the fire. If a, if a client asks you a question and catches you off guard, you have to think on your feet and you have to sound eloquent because otherwise they would kind of lose confidence in you. And I guess I forgot to mention that these clients are paying these consulting companies uh, upwards of $175 or more even. But for, for my rate, uh, I believe it was about $175 an hour. Of course, I'm not getting paid that much, but obviously the consulting company takes a big cut out of that. So I really enjoyed my time at the consulting company. And when I started working there as um, a fresh grad, I remember getting through the final interview, sitting in the president's office and talking to him and he asked me, what are your salary expectations? So at the time, as a fresh grad, 50K was already a great starting salary. So I told him 53 to 58. That was the range that I was expecting. And I remember this. He said to me, that's a really odd number. Why 53 to 58? And I said, because that would be more than what my girlfriend was making at the time. So <laughs> that's not career advice for you. That's just what I said. And when I think back on it, it's kind of funny to uh, negotiate like that. Um, and I told my girlfriend about it afterwards and she got a chuckle out of it. But when I got hired, I started off at 58. So maybe I asked her too little. But anyways, I learned a ton and I had a great experience there. I stayed at this company for two years. And in the process, I started from, you know, um, just a developer to a team lead. They promoted really fast. I got to lead a team. I got to travel on my own. Uh, I got to I got to speak with clients on my own. And I worked with a lot of different technologies as well. So this consulting company was primarily a Microsoft shop. So initially I worked with C Sharp and ASP.NET doing web applications. And then we did some desktop applications with WPF, which is Windows Presentation Framework. And it basically allowed you to build a very fluid, a very animated desktop applications for PCs. And then after that, I got to work on my first touch device. 
and it's probably something you guys don't remember or haven't seen actually. I would be surprised if you guys have because not many of them made it to consumers' hands. But it was basically called the Microsoft Surface. Now let me stop you there. It's not the tablet that you know today. It is. It was this giant coffee table. It was a 40 inch touch screen, but it was it was a screen that was embedded in a coffee table, if you can imagine that. It was a touch screen. So you built apps for it using WPF. And I'm gonna show a little video of it over my head right now so you can kind of see it in action while I speak. But it was really cool because it enabled these experiences that um, you, you couldn't imagine before. So imagine something like uh, going to a bar and then being able to order off of the table. I mean, now it might be kind of easy because you can embed there. I mean, there's touch screens everywhere. But at that time, uh, the iPad wasn't out, the iPhone wasn't out, and you had this giant touch screen uh, coffee table. And the cool thing about it was is that they had these little tags that you can put underneath objects like cups and stuff like that or different products. So you can put those products on the table and then it would almost be like the table could sense the object and then tell you about it because uh, the screen would kind of light up around the object and, and tell you more about it because of that code. Uh, so there were a lot of cool things that it enabled. And there were some shopping experiences that uh, I think we installed at Banana Republic where you can kind of have a model and you can see different pieces of clothing on it in a table environment. And a lot of the times we deployed these in lobbies, like hotel lobbies and stuff like that. Anyways, that was a really cool experience. But needless to say, I don't think it really took off because Microsoft discontinued that product. They, when they launched the tablets and they called it Microsoft Surface, they renamed the table to PixelSense and then now it's completely gone. <laughs> But nonetheless, it was really cool. Next, uh, I worked on something called Microsoft Silverlight and think of it as the Microsoft version of Flash. So it enabled rich web experiences. And this was huge back then because we didn't have HTML5, we didn't have you know all of those cool animations going on that's enabled with CSS3 and HTML5 and stuff like that. So uh, Flash was really big, right? And uh, Microsoft Silverlight was kind of a contender to that as well. And everything I learned with WPF and working with uh, Surface was actually transferable to uh, Silverlight because so far everything that I've been talking about has been using the programming language C Sharp. But in addition to C Sharp, designing the user interface, uh, it would be using something called XAML, which was just XML. And um, the Microsoft Surface used this, the WPF for desktop applications used this, and so did Silverlight. So Silverlight was brand new, everyone wanted to learn about it. At this time, I met someone from Microsoft who was an evangelist for Silverlight, and she hooked me up with these two guys in Toronto who had this uh, small consulting company. It was just them two and one other student. Let's call this company B, because they're gonna play a part in my uh, career soon. But anyways, I got hooked up with them and we started a Toronto meetup or user group for Silverlight. So we would host um, these meetups after work uh, at different locations downtown and I would speak and I would present and we would have other presenters and we'd have pizza and prizes and it was a great time. But anyways, I got to know these two guys and they were working with Microsoft as well and they were doing like really small projects because they were so small. One of them was uh, the tech guy, one of them was the business guy, and they had this student. So at this time, I've been working at this company A, this mid-sized consulting company for two years. I started off at 58K, like I said, and by the time I left after two years, I was making 68K, and I was a team leader by the time I left. And the reason I left was because I wanted to start my own business. And it was as simple as that. I've always been very entrepreneurial and during university, I'd have all of these side businesses and side hustles, not all of them tech related. Maybe I'll tell you guys about that in the future if you're interested. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you are. Uh, but anyways, I left what most people would call a good thing um, because I was getting promoted and I was well respected and everything, but I decided to leave that to start my own business. 